All right, so I get asked this question a lot, and it's uh, about time I make a video about it, of how to assemble uh, Viking coilovers. And so I'm actually helping a buddy with an install today, so it figured to be a good time to, to do this. Um, so when you order shocks from me that come from Viking, or just Viking in general, uh, this is the stuff it comes with. This is the whole kit. You have the shock. Um, this is the spring seat. Uh, this is the jam nut for the spring seat. Uh, this is the top cup that holds the top of the spring in, a uh, thrust bearing kit with washers, and your uh, end bearings with snap rings. And so this is all done by hand. The only tool you'll need is a pair of uh, uh, snap pliers for the snap rings. Everything else is, is done by hand. Uh, and also here's the spanner wrenches. So the first thing is when you open the box, they have this bright yellow warning. It says anti-seize must be applied. And they are not kidding. You really have to do that. Or what will happen is you'll gall up the threads on the shock when you try to adjust it. And it's not a, it's not a good time. Um, also, they don't say it on here, but when you do adjust the spring preload, you'll want to jack up the vehicle so there's not weight directly on the spring. You want to make it as easy as you can. Uh, so the first thing I do is I usually put in the, put in the bearings. And the easiest way I found to do this is to go ahead and put a snap ring on one side uh, empty. So if you know how to put in a snap ring, you probably snap forward through this part. So you'll want to make sure that's fully seated in the groove. All right, you flip it over. Um, so these are steel uh, bearings. Uh, on all my kits, you'll want to make sure you have steel ones and not uh, poly bearings. A lot of cars use uh, these trucks are just too heavy for the the poly bearings. So the steel ones are rated for something ridiculous, like thirty thousand pounds. Uh, but it should slide smoothly like that. The other snap ring. Okay. Again, make sure it's in the uh, in the groove there, all the way around. So flip it over to the other same other thing, the other side, same thing. Whoops. This reminds me of doing a snap ring inside a uh, a uh, GM 1500 transfer case that holds the case together. If you ever done with those, you know what I'm talking about. It's awful. Oop, too far. Maybe we'll get it. And so there's always the uh, pry gently into place method. That works really well. So make sure it's in there. All right, both bearings are in. That's pretty easy. Uh, the second thing I do, um, in no particular order, is I like to mark the shaft so you can get uh, a good idea of where the shock is in its travel when you're um, trying to install it. It's not so easy to tell once you put the spring on. And so usually I'll take two different color Sharpies and I'll make one mark uh, directly in the middle of the shaft. I mean, you can kind of kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be super precise but but you can um you can measure it if you want so I'll make a mark all the way around actually did that really well um then with a second color 
make one roughly an inch uh, to the top and bottom. On the shorter shocks, you might want to do it a little bit closer, but the idea is you're marking a, a, a right height range on the shaft itself. So when you go to set the preload and the right height, you can make sure the shock is in, in a good spot for its uh, travel. That's what I'll probably do right here. Right here. And obviously use a, a felt tip marker. Don't actually scratch the shaft or anything like that. Okay. So next thing is you're going to put all the spring stuff on. And so you'll want to use uh, anti-seize on the threads like I talked about. And this is, this is some of that nasty copper stuff. And yes, it does make a mess. So just be prepared so use a uh, I would say a liberal amount really as much as you want um, once you get the height adjusted you can you can wipe off the excess you don't need a ton of it um, where nothing's sitting on it it'll just collect dirt get us started. So the first thing on is the uh, jam nut and so it ha has a raised edge on it. You'll want this to be up towards the towards the spring. So the second piece is the spring seat and obviously this side goes up. Uh, also just want to mention on this shock, um, it has a, a bump stop installed. This is something I worked with Viking on to uh, to try and help out um, like some of the lifted guys that might run into situations where they compress it a lot and this will help save the the shock if there is an over compression um, incident, but uh, an external bump stop is always a good idea also. Um. You want to run these down pretty good. You need it down far enough to get the spring on, um, but so you're going to have to probably come back up anyway. I can probably add some more right there. Let's make this a little easier. So I usually just do maybe the bottom half of the threads. You won't you won't need to do the whole whole thing because the, uh, the spring seat's not going to ride up that high. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Are you taking one down? Just kind of play it right here or something. All right, that's probably probably okay right there. Um, can't really have too much of this stuff when you're doing it. You can always wipe off the excess later. So. So the next part is put on the, uh, the thrust 
bearings and washers. So washer goes down on the seat. Um, then I like to put some anti-seize on the, the bearing itself. So it doesn't take a, a whole lot, um, and this stuff does make a mess, but I feel like it helps. Once you got that lubed up, put it on the shaft and the next washer. Let's I'm gonna zoom back out for this. All right. So once you're here, you need to put the spring on. So this particular shock uses uh, 14 inch springs, and I'm using uh, Ebok, Ibok springs, whatever in. Uh, in this case because they had the size I wanted to use but springs are pretty universal you can use just about any brand with any shock as long as it's the right size um, in this case Viking coilovers use a, a two and a half inch spring so any two and a half inch spring should work and I need to adjust it here because this thing's pretty tall all right so once it's all the way down uh, you'll take the top spring cup and I have to push the bump stop down a little bit. And so I don't have the spring seat quite down far enough. So I need to turn it a little bit more so I can get the spring further down. Make sure you have it fully extended. There we go. All right, so when you go to uh, put it back in, let's swivel over here. It helps to put the bottom in a vise. Um, yeah. And so it does not need to be tight, just, just a little bit enough to hold it. And so what you wanna do is you wanna tighten the bottom spring seat enough so you take up the slack up here. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulty. Um, but you have two uh, wrenches that come with it. One is going to be for the jam nut, and the other one is going to be for the spring seat. Uh, so the jam nut is very last. Once you have your preload all set, your right height where you want it, then you, you tighten up the, the jam nut and the spring seat together to lock it in place. But for now, we just need the, the spring seat wrench. So what you do is you just simply spin it, and once you take up all the slack, so right here, when the spring is tight, it's snug against the top and it's snug against the bottom. This is zero preload. This is, um, there's no additional force on the coilover. So when you do preload, what you're doing is you're, you're adding force to the whole assembly before it starts compressing. So for instance, if you have 500 pound springs and you preload it two inches, then it's going to take a thousand pounds before this thing starts to compress. And so what that effect has is it'll raise your static ride height when you add preload. Um, you don't want to do too much of that uh, because at the end of the day, you still want the shock to ride in the middle of its travel where we made those marks on the shaft. Um, and, and so if you end up having to add too much preload, that probably means you need a stiffer spring or a different size shock to fit. Um, but just from experience, I know these will take uh, a little bit of preload to get it to sit right. So I'll go ahead and do it a few turns, kind of just to get started. It's easier on the bench than when installed, obviously. Um, but as of right now, this is fully assembled and ready to install and test fit. And once you get the preload set, you'll tighten up the jam nut You'll set the uh, settings on the shock and you're ready to go.